Let's continue talking about don't let Maui layout putting the focus on the grid. First of all, what is a grid? The grid is a layout that allows to organize its children in cells made up of rows and columns. So the shape of the grid is specified by defining each row and column individually. We can specify physics size cells with a specific age or a specific width. We can specify cells as either as their children. And also we can use share the remaining space between one or different rows, cells and different views. The definition of column is exactly the same after rows, except that you put the width instead of the eight. So how is the row and column definitions? There are dedicated classes that define a row or a column. A row or a column have, uh, in this case of the row, one specific important property that is the eight of the row. And in the case of the column, the main property is the width. In both cases, the user type is the grid length, but what is a grid length? A grid length encapsulates two things, the unit and the value. Units can be absolute, auto, star. So when we use an absolute grid length, specify a fixed row eight or a column width, for example, row eight, 100. The value it's in units independent of the platform, but it's a fixed value that always would be 100. While with auto grid length, allow the row weight or the column width to adapt automatically becomes the size of the largest chill. So for example, if inside a row weight auto we put a button of 860, automatically the row weight will be adapted to that size. Then we have the star grid length that shared the available space proportionally among all row columns using the star size. When we use one star, it's the same than use directly star because are equivalent in Shaman. The grid have two collections, one collection for row, another collection for column definitions and we can add rows directly to this. So let's, let's see an example of how to define rows and columns in a grid. So we have a grid and we are going to define different rows. The first row will have an eight of 100, fine. The second row will be auto. So this means that will be as taller as the Sun Iger. And then we can define another two rows that will be star and two star. So this will share the remaining space between one third and two thirds. The default values of rows and columns is star. So if we create a grid with three rows and two columns, we'll create an uniform grid of, of three rows by two columns. Talking about the numbering of rows and columns, rows and columns numbering start at zero. So the first row will be zero row and the first column will be the zero column. To define the place that will occupy a view inside a grid, we use some attached properties that are used to set which column and which row will use. And also if the review need to take more space, we need to take, for example, two columns or two rows, can use the column span and row spans properties to define the number of columns or the number of rows that they think will span. So going to the previous example where we define three rows and two columns, imagine that we have a box view that will be defined in the grid row one and grid column zero. Think mentally, where will be this box view? Okay, yeah, we'll be here because grids, rows and columns start numbering at zero. So the first row will be zero. So because we have in the second one, the number one, while we are using the first column, the column zero, so we'll be in the first column. 
Now we have exactly the same example but using column span 2. What will happen? Okay, this is issue. So this is establish the span and we are taking more space because we are taking two columns instead of one by default. Where will be this box view? Okay, the default values for cells locations is zero and the default value for spans is one. So we'll take only one row and one column and will be placed in the first column and first row, zero, zero. Then we have layout options like happens before with, for example, the stack layout. So we can use horizontal options and vertical options to manage the alignment of the view inside the cell. We can horizontal option a box view in the first row and first column, the first cell, the, the cell 00, zero, in the horizontal option center and vertical option at the end, and the result will be that that you can see on the screen. Like in the case of the stack layout that we have seen in previous video, we can set the spacing between the children by the fall, like happened before, is six, the default value, but instead of half, use a single spacing property. Now we can set and specify different values between the row spacing and the column spacing using the row spacing and column spacing properties. An attached property that we mentioned before is a property that is defined on one class, but set on object of different types. So for example, we have here a button and a button not have the row columns properties, but because is it, it is a children from the grid and these properties are defined in the grid and attached to objects of other types as needed, we can just use these attached properties directly in the button. So typically a layout will look for attached property on its children's element. For example, this button, Inside the grid can use properties like the grid.row, grid.column, etc. Applying an attached properties history in Shamel use the name of the owning class, in this case, for example, the grid, and the name of the attached property with all the properties suffix. So button can set the row and the column inside a grid using the grid.row and the grid.column properties. Let's see all these Theory in a real example running already in an application, a .NET MAUI application running on Windows, where we have all the different case in C -sharp code and shell code. So let's see from the basic one to the most complex example. This is a basic grid demo. We have this demo here, and it is a grid that is defining three rows and two columns. So one, two, three rows, one column, two columns, fine. And then to put content inside of uh, the grid, we set the children's, we don't use the grid column and grid property, grid column and grid row properties. All the children's will be inside. Think about it. Yeah, the cell zero, zero, because it's the default value. So everything will be here. But using the attached properties, grid column and green row, we can just move all these children to the correct place. So for example, this red box view, it's here. Why? Because it's in grid, grid row two. So grid row zero, grid row one, grid row two, perfect. And then it's using column properties not set, so by default is zero, and it's using column span two, so column zero, and two columns it's uh, used. So for that reason, it's occupying all this space. The size of this row is defined by the grid row eight, that will be always 100 units independent of the platform, so 100, two times the uh, the rest of the space and one time the rest of the space. So this is divided by two thirds of the rest of the space available and one third of the rest of the space available from all the space except 100 
of independent units. That is a basic example that we can continue taking a look um, just uh, with a simplified syntax because we can define all this in a easier way using the following. Row definitions and column definitions. Column definitions to columns, row definitions to start tar 100. It's exactly the same code as this, but with a less verbose mode. Then we can continue taking more samples, taking a look to the spacing. It's exactly the same case that we have seen so far, but using in this case, the row spacing and column spacing properties. In this way, we can set the spacing between the columns and between the rows. We have also alignment. We have here a grid with three columns and three rows. So let's go to the alignment page. This is the definition of columns and rows. And then we can see that inside every, inside every cell, we have uh, labels and we have a box view to define the color. And the label, it's aligned in different place. So let's take a look to this. For example, let's go to the last one. Is this one lower right? It's here. And what is this cell? It's the grid column 0, 1, 2, and row 0, 1, 2, 2, 2. So grid row 2, grid column 2, and then the text is aligned horizontally at the end and vertically also at the end. Horizontal options end, vertical options end. This one, for example, center, center, it's horizontal option center, vertical option center. It's this case, for example. So we can not only put every content inside every specific cell, we can also manage the alignment inside the cell. Then we can, of course, nest different uh, grid. Let's see this example nesting grid. We have here a grid with two rows. The first row is used this box view, while the second row is this one. It's again another grid that is defining several rows to put the slider, the label, the slider, label, the slider, label, etc. We can replace this by a stack layout, a vertical stack layout, for example. So there are always different ways to combine and nest all these layouts to get the most effective way to achieve all results. And of course, for example, we can create complex layout like, for example, this. This is a calculator. It's used this example from here where we define all these rows and columns where mostly we're going to put different buttons, every button with a number. And for example, let's choose one of them. For example, the nine. So if we go to the button nine, we can just think about it. We have here one, two, three, four columns. So this will be zero, one, two, column two, column two. And we have the one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So we'll be in the zero, one, two row, grid column two, grid row two. And yeah, that is how it is. So the grid, it's a very, very common use layout because it's really versatile. It's really simple to understand once you have all the concept of split and use different cells and divide by rows and columns the, the space. It's really simple to understand when you got it and it's really versatile. We can use nest different layouts to achieve our results and give us a lot of possibilities to achieve what we really need to do in our applications. If you have learned something new or like the content, you can subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss new content when it appears. Remember, you can leave your opinion or feedback in the comments of the video. See you soon.